Welcome to Electron Line. Now that we've gained some basic understanding of what a Fourier transform is, and in the future we'll show you some more videos to show you the relationship between the Fourier transform and some real-life examples in, in electronics and also in radar um, applications. But now let's go ahead and try to work out the Fourier transform of some simple transformations. So here we have a single pulse input with an amplitude of A and a pulse width of tau so that it's equally divided over the F of T line, the vertical line here. So we have a, T over a tau over 2 on the left and a minus tau over 2 to the right. To, I should say a tau over 2 to the right and a minus tau over 2 to the left, which then defines the width of the pulse. So you can see that the pulse width tau is equal to tau. The period is infinity because there's only a single pulse, it doesn't repeat, and, and then the amplitude is equal to A. And so we can define the function in the time domain as being equal to the magnitude A, which is a constant between those two values for time, and it's zero everywhere else. And so the Fourier transform, to transform it into the frequency domain, is going to be equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function in the time domain times e to the minus i omega t, sometimes also write e to the minus j omega t, so i and j can be interchanged, it's the imaginary number, the square root of negative 1. Of course, we also need to have a dt. When we plug in what that function is for the values from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2, this integral becomes the following integral from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2 of f of t, which is the constant a between those two values, times e to the minus i omega t times dt. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that dt over a little bit. I'm going to need some room because what I want to do is I want to add the differential. Since I have an e to the minus i omega t, I'm going to need a minus i omega here, a minus i omega to have the proper differential. And of course, I need to divide by a minus i omega, and then eventually I can take the a and put it outside the integral sign as well. So now I'm ready to go ahead and integrate that. So this becomes equal to a minus a over i omega times the integral of this, which is simply going to be e to the minus i omega t evaluated from a minus tau over 2 to a positive tau over 2. So when we plug in the upper limit, we get the following. So I'll keep this constant right here. So it's minus a divided by i omega times, when I plug in the upper limit, I get e to the minus i omega times tau over 2. And then plug in the lower limit, that's minus e to the, let's see here, I plug in a minus, that becomes a plus, so e to the plus i omega tau over 2. And then when I look at that, I realize that looks a lot like the sine function. All I'm missing at the bottom here is a, is a divide by 2i. And of course, I want this to be positive, I want this to be negative, so I can actually move that around, put the positive in front, put the negative in the back by changing that, by using the negative sign here. So I'm going to do that. So this becomes equal to a divided by i omega times, so move the negative sign in front, I get e to the positive i omega times tau over 2 minus e to the minus i omega tau over 2. And then I want, in the bottom here, I want a 2i. Well, the i comes from here, so I can get rid of this, but since I divide by 2, I must also multiply times 2. So that way, I don't add an extra term in there. So now this quantity right here can be now transformed into the function called the sine. So this can now be written as 2a over omega times the sine of omega times tau over 2. Omega times tau over 2, like this. And then if we want to write this as a sinc function, we need to then also divide this by omega tau over 2. Now I already have an omega, so I can put a line here. I can put the omega over here, but now I need to divide this by tau 
If I divide by tau, I must multiply by tau and then divide this by 2. And of course, if I do that, I need to divide by 2 as well. So what happens is the 2 cancels out. And I can then write this as a times tau, which is the amplitude of the function at the omega equals 0 position, times the sine of omega times tau over 2 divided by omega times tau over 2, like this. Which means that's a sinc function, and I want to grab that function. Maybe I'll grab it right over here. So if I grab the function, it will look like this. This here would be the transform function. That would be f as a function of omega. And then I will have a sinc function that will look like this. And of course, that sinc function will go in both directions like that. The amplitude right here is the amplitude right there, which is a times tau. So the first position here is where the angle here, the sine of that angle goes to zero. So that means that my angle omega tau over 2 must be equal to pi. If I now solve for omega, I can say that omega therefore is equal to 2 pi over tau. And so that means that this point right here, which is on the frequency axis, this point right here will be equal to 2 pi over tau. Not period, but tau. So this point right here will be at 4 pi over tau. This point right here will be at 6 pi over tau. And so this is the transform function, the Fourier transform of my initial single pulse input with amplitude A and with tau. And so there's a nice little example of how to find the Fourier transform of a single pulse like that. And that's how it's done.